are you? I am fine. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thank you very much. Well, I have to tell you, Charlie, this is such a fun family film for the summer. We don't have too many of them out there for the whole family. And but for tiny little tots, I think this is perfect. And you've got something for everyone here with the multi generational aspect of the film. And I have to commend you on that, on this story idea. So I'm really curious how you worked with Michael and uh, Brian in putting together, coming up with the script so that it was not only cohesive from a story standpoint, but one that Michael could really play with visually and bring to life. Well, um, you know, we, we, um, I created the, the character back in 2003, um, and I created, I don't know if you knew this, but we produced a show called Green Ghost Mexican, mm -hmm. and it came out locally, um, in South Texas, and we produced about 30 shows, all in Spanish. The last one I did, uh, Green Ghost of Mexican, The Lost Stone, was very similar uh, as far as the nature of, you know, the stone power and all this stuff. So um, when we worked on the script, um, um, I had already I moved from one production team to the next, to another, and when I got David Rodriguez and he pulled in Michael, and then we sat down in a room and we just started throwing these ideas out there and lots of ideas. And actually... Um, you know, we were fortunate enough uh, to, to have a great cinematographer. We we also uh, decided to, you know, we're talking about the visual stuff. Well, there's a lot of stuff that I, I added after we shot the film. You saw the, the, the VFX that mm -hmm. they weren't shot those VFX necessarily, but I had I adapted it to in, to <coughs> put them in there. Um, I, I after I saw the cut after we we did the movie, I, I wasn't really happy with the backstory, so I um, changed it up a bit and um, sort of I moved my movie down to Chile, and I had the Chilean team down there because of Marco Zador who plays the villain in the film. Uh, he he you know, was a real sweetheart of a guy. He he and uh, Ernesto Diaz, and then also uh, Andy Chang who plays you know uh, Master Hung in the movie that uh, this Chinese gentleman. Um, he, um, he, he's big in, into, into directing and to acting. He was Jackie Chan's stunt double for 20 years. And then he, uh, did, he was just the action director for Shang-Chi, for example. The mm -hmm. whole movie Shang-Chi action sequences, they're on, they're because of him. <laughs> he was just amazing. And, um, so yeah, working, uh, on, on what we were trying to get out of, you know, a lot of them based on our budget too, you know, we had to focus more, in more on, the, the, the martial arts because I wasn't going to try to go up against the Avengers or anything like that with a special for the VFX but I wanted to look as realistic as possible and look as good as possible um, but a lot of that was done after we shot the film mm -hmm. uh, it was the ideas and the concepts because I had to work with a team down in Chile to get you know you look it, it really looks a lot bigger than, uh, than than people had expected it to look you know and um, and again I'm not trying to compete with a hundred million dollar movies but it, they, these guys did for me what would cost in Hollywood millions of dollars. Sure. And and I, I I was very very fortunate to have that situation that they they really helped me uh, with the cut and what we wanted to focus in on uh, as far as the, the storytelling and there was a lot of stuff that we shot that we didn't use like 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 a lot of productions but um, we had an uh, an extraordinary amount of stuff that we weren't able to to really put in there but we wanted to streamline the film and get it moving and and the way it felt and and so now i'm i'm, I'm happy with it that we've been very fortunate to have a, a great response uh from the public so far from the theatrical release that we just did in texas but yeah um michael did have the idea to come up with using that the lens that we did that the same lens that they used on the camera and, uh in, in the movie the transformers films mm -hmm. So um, we didn't have the same camera. We still used the Red Dragon, but it was for the $200,000 lens, which made it look big. And the lighting guy was one of the best in the business. And so um, we were, we're, we, that really was a, a big plus for us.
It's all about the glass. When you're shooting, it's all about the glass in that lens to, yeah. to give you the yeah. really good look that you want that is appropriate for your film. Right. And see, Michael uh, d did well in the fact that uh, he, you know, he would uh, he, he set the, the tone on the set that was very uh, fun. We had a great chemistry with each other. Um, and then uh, gave us some range to, to improv some stuff too. So it was like, uh, and it was, you know, again, yeah, it's my project and all. And if I want to improv, <laughs> but I, I tried to, to, to take the coaching from those in the business because this was my first movie. So, um, and then also have great fight choreographers, which we did. I mean, Marcos Aurora bringing in uh, Andy Chang, and then uh, we had uh, Arnold Chong, uh, who, who brought me. Uh, Kane Velasquez and brought me uh, Bobby Lashley from the WWE, and I had worked with a few other guys on the set. So what we got visually on, on out there was stunning. I mean, the fight scenes were just. I'm very happy with how the fight scenes turned out, really. And Andy Chang brought his own wires. He said, "Don't worry, child. I'm not going to charge you for wire work. I'll, I'll do my own wires." So I was like, "Are you serious? Wow!" <laughs> so we. I'm very fortunate, very blessed in that regard. The fight scenes really are very well choreographed. And what enhances the fight scenes is in the post-production with the visual effects, with the energy beams, the energy light, the triad of light with red, blue, green, that really pops and makes Thank the you. fight choreography yeah, pop even more. So I'm very, very impressed with that. I think you brought this in. You know, your editor kept this... This is, it's edited well, so that, I mean, I know you had your team of Ernesto Diaz, uh, Espinosa, and Mo Stoby, but they did a really good job at finding a pace that maintains so that kids won't lose interest. That's right, and, and honestly, I, I had finished this movie, I mean, we had finished color correction, we had finished everything, we locked the cut, but... It still didn't. I mean, I was just like, okay, fine, let's just let it go. You know, I was just going to let it go almost and just put it out there and just go straight to video. And then, But if I didn't have representation, I sort of made it my goal. Like, if I didn't have it, like, WME behind me or something like that, that I, I wasn't ready to quit yet, you know? So I, they looked at it and they're like, pretty good. It still needs a lot of work. Said, you know what? I agree with you. I reopened the cut. I got some help also from Becca Rodriguez, which was Robert Rodriguez's sister mm -hmm. who, she she cut um Sin City uh, Dame uh to yeah. die for I think. Yep. Um and she <clears throat> cut uh several other big movies with him and she's she was sort of like Rain Man talent when it comes to editing. She 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 did a version for us that looked really, really damn good. So um Ernesto uh took some of her, her some of her suggestions in the cut and and enhanced them even, and put his own t touches in there. So, um, yeah, it was he was basically trying to find that pace that you're saying that mm -hmm. you know you don't lose interest and in finding the fun and the action and letting go of stuff that doesn't move the story forward. It's hard to do. You know, you yeah, stuff in there yeah. Killing your darlings is always hard to do, Charlie. But yeah, sometimes yeah. you got to do it. One of your greatest assets with this film is Danny Trejo. He is hilarious. Oh, yeah. Hilarious. And the way that he would poke fun and the character Master Jin is being G-I-N, not J-I-N-N, is in like Aladdin right. or something. And he just plays that to the hilt. But he, he is such comic relief in this film. Everything yeah. he does is funny. But it has yeah. it has weight to it. And then it lets everyone else play around him, particularly you, because you're still trying to figure out. Charlie's trying to figure out what the heck all, this whole world is and what this is about. And exactly. for you to stand there with these blank looks on your face like, huh, what are you talking about? Everybody can relate to that. But then you've got right. Danny's energy. And similarly... With you've got these wonderful veterans, Renee Victor and Pepe Sarna. Oh, I love their work. So yeah. you bring them in, especially Renee. And well, she just called me for my birthday on June 11th. 
and it's just like I'm just I just, she just spent so much for her to call me on my birthday and say I'm just so happy to have you in my life and I was like wow Renee I'll, you know love you thank you and same here Renee she was just fantastic to work with and uh, you're a true a true um, professional mm -hmm. and loving person and, and we just had that vibe going on in our uh, on set everybody brought a little something and everybody meshed there was no nobody with with issues everybody was just in a good head space and um nobody messed up you know on the, uh, even we had a couple of the production folks that we had to move on but other than that it just was a great chemistry there really really great. how involved were you with the casting process considering the cast that you ended up with here which is amazing no it's well, I was lucky because they were making calls for me, you know, to, to basically convince these veterans, like you said, to work with me. Like, who's this Charlie guy? Why would I work with him? And it was like, it was the, trying not to come across as, okay, this is uh, some businessman that has some extra money to throw around and wants to just make his own movie and not take that seriously, which was not the case. I was taking this extremely seriously, and I had lots of experience on camera, just never for a feature film. Um, and so in selling the true veterans like Danny Deco and Renee and Kuno and Sophia on, on me, basically, that I was bilingual you know, businessman that, that, that created this character years ago and developed it over the years. And, um, you know, we sat down and, and wrote a movie script and uh, here we are. We've got the, the, the right equipment, the right crew. And uh, now with the, the Olmos and uh, Rodriguez, uh, name tied to it in Hollywood, which carries lots of weight. Mm -hmm. you know? So uh, that got their attention, and and uh, and it was just basically, like I said, them being comfortable with the fact that I was taking this seriously and seeing what I had done, watching some of my old shows, or seeing a little bit of what what I was about. Mm -hmm. uh, sold the idea, and and they they went for it, and, and thank God they did. I mean, and it grew from not having that level of talent to having that level of talent is just a blessing. It truly, truly was. Could have thrown in a free car for everyone like Oprah. Yeah. Well, I, I threw in a free, uh, when we did the, the premiere, we, we threw in three Nissan Leafs uh, that, that people could register for um, and to, to win the raffle. We did give away three Nissan Leafs. Actors get very excited with free stuff, just like press do. Oh, yeah. So, you know, it, to clinch the deal, man, you could have thrown in a free yeah, car for everyone. But I'm glad I'm glad you didn't have to, that they came in based on the strength of the concept. Based on the strength of the concept, and that's very true. They saw it and they said, hmm, this is interesting. Mm -hmm. I really like this has been out there. This has been this multicultural, so to speak, and, and uh, with this, this mixture of things, uh, elements in it, um, with a little bit of... Uh, a true story mixed in with some of some facts of my life that were thrown in that were true, and so um, yeah. This is a very physical movie. A lot of action oh. here, Charlie. What kind? And I I can tell you're doing. I would say a if not all, but the majority of your own action and stunt work. So yes, I'm curious, what kind of training? you went through to ready your body for this i'm going to tell you I, I was a swimmer in college okay i had some wrestling i was I'm a, uh, yeah i swam at tcu i walked on the team and earned a scholarship and then after swimming um i took up judo mm -hmm. and uh, and then jujitsu and i competed in jujitsu and um i loved it i mean uh and then so the martial arts and, and i've always been very athletic obviously and then so when it was time I, I also made it a goal of mine I said I don't need a, a stunt guy to do all my stuff now my stunt double well, it was great and and he and he did some some of the bigger falls for me mm -hmm. getting kicked into the lake for and stuff like that and falling back into the wall um and um and then he did some, a couple of my fight scenes when I was just dead uh, I did, but I did most, like you said, I'm glad you picked up on that. I wanted them not to look, uh, I knew I wasn't going to look that great in the striking arts because I never really practiced the striking arts. So I went over to one movie that helped inspire me, and uh, this movie was It Man. And when I saw It Man, um, I went over, I just looked up the choreographer for 
jazz band. Um, and I, I went over to England and worked with him. He worked directly, you know, and Ip Man was about Bruce Lee's master. Mm-hmm. This guy actually worked for Ip, uh, for Ip Man's actual son. He trained under him. Wow. And this guy's name was Leo Jung. And so I went over there for a month. And I went with my girlfriend and my mentor, who was a 10th degree black belt in Judo and Aikido and a retired psychologist. They all sat there with me training, uh, watching me train uh, from 10 in the morning till 5 o'clock every day. And uh, and I was training in Wing Chun um, and uh, Muay Thai and Taekwondo. And then I came back to the States and I worked with um, guys that worked on the Born Identity uh, movies. Um, so yeah, I mean, you talk about the level of talent I was able to actually work with. Oh man, it was, made me look a lot better. I mean, I'm not, you know, like I said, I'm making fun of myself in the movie anyway, cause mm-hmm. you know, making fun of the gringo superhero construct. Um, <laughs> but I, I just, uh, knocking that down a peg and, uh, I didn't want to look that great. I wanted to look pretty good, but not like the, like Marco Zorro. No, you yeah, look just, you look fine, Charlie, because we need you to be, you've got to be that almost like a little schlub of a guy in real life, his business yeah. is going under, you know, he's using his suit jacket to clean bird poop off his car window. Right. This is not a guy who is Avengers fit, shall we That's say. That's what I mean. That's why I didn't want to look Avengers yeah. level. You got it. You nailed it. That's exactly right. And I am sure that when kids watch this film... The thing they're going to remember and laugh at the most is the bird poop on the car window. <laughs> that was a funny, you know, uh, funny fun fact about that is uh, it was actually a mixture of toothpaste. Yes, well, it looked realistic. It looked realistic, Charlie. I couldn't believe, I couldn't, I couldn't believe how real it looked. I was <laughs> like, wow. And people look at it and say, oh. <laughs> because everybody knows... Everyone knows that feeling when you walk out to your car, especially if you've just had it washed, and then you see that, and it's just like, oh no! I don't know if you noticed. I don't know if you noticed the sound mix. You probably didn't. It, it, a lot of people didn't catch it, but because the, the the music was uh, it was up a bit, and my my voice was down a little bit. When I first walk outside and I see the the you know bird poo, I looked up in the air and I was like, flying bird. Now that was a tip to the hat. A tip of the hat to Peter Sellers. Oh. Flying, flying belled. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. From the pink band. So, so yeah. okay. That, that was a little, he was a big influence on me. One of my favorite films. Pink Panther Strikes Again. So, I've got to ask you, Charlie, now that you have done your first feature film, yes. what was and ready to come out to the world for everybody to see and enjoy, and they will enjoy this film. I'm, Thank you. I'm curious, what was the learning curve like for you? Since you did have experience, you had this character, what was this learning curve like for you as a creator, a writer, and star, and being involved hands-on in all the aspects of this production? What yeah, was I that learning you, curve I like? Tell you. I mean, like, again, I didn't study writing a script at all. Mm-hmm. Um, I did have, a, we had a writer connected with us that, that did, but, um, you know, I was, if I had studied that a bit more, I could have really done some things differently. Um, I relied on, on I, I should have been able to check some of this stuff. I did I it just, uh, it's, it's, a, it's, what it does, you know, there's a lot of times, like, in, in in school when I skipped out on accounting, for example, and then in real life, I almost lost my business several times because I didn't know what I was looking at in accounting. Because you have to know accounting if you're going to be a, an entrepreneur. And now you don't have to you know, be that great at it, but you need to know what you're looking at. You know, So um, this was one of those things. I didn't look at that. I'm a creative person. I love to come up with ideas, and I just didn't ever study how to write a script. I didn't I didn't. I didn't know really much about anything. I, I knew enough to get in front of the camera. I knew enough uh, to 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 be, to, you know, as entertaining as I can be, and not be not be too fearful of the camera or anything. Um, but my learning curve about what I should have done, like on a daily basis on set, mm-hmm. like, who I could have, you know, as a producer, like an executive producer that was responsible for everything. Basically, I couldn't just rely on someone else. Uh, Without you know, now I would look at Salt Lake Dailies, for example, with the director. Probably 
mm-hmm. way. Um, I would, you know, the way we file things, the way we uh, or, or stored them, uh, you know, there were just so many things I learned. It's like, wow, I didn't know about this. And, you know, and even in the cinematography part of it, um, which I still don't know any technical jargon, but, um, you know, I, from what I know now, I'm, I got I was pretty darn good when uh, <laughs> learning uh, the post pro, uh, process when I went down to Chile and working on on the special effects and then walking me through these technical guys what they're doing and, and I was like well I want to look a little bit more like this and look more like that and then I worked on color correction as well so I did learn a ton I mean mm-hmm. I, I gotta tell you if I were to ever do it again it would be a heck of a lot easier believe me because well, I wouldn't make the same mistakes again. That leads me to my last question for you, Charlie, because this film, Green Ghost and the Masters of the Stone, has a very pulpy, very Flash Gordon serial style to it. That I could so see this as a franchise or broken out into episodic uh, television or streaming. Do you have any plans to make another film or continue with Green Ghost and perhaps develop a franchise. Yeah, I'm thinking of continue, if I continue with Green Ghost, which I think I I, I may, um, I want to see uh, this, you know, we're releasing the film this next week, 28th video on demand, mm-hmm. Amazon, Apple. Um, I want to see how, how it does um, and if the, the momentum it gets with the public. Um, and you know, um, I'm I'm open to uh, a series, possibly maybe an animated series. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a lot going on at the border. There's a lot going on in the world. I mean, the Green Ghost and Mexican originally, and now Green, the Green Ghost concept. I think um, really would be. Um, I think it would have a a, a big following. I, I really do. Yeah, especially it was. It was multicultural as we are in this world now i mean the mix that we all are the human race and it shouldn't even be any other races it's just the human race i mean <laughs> and you know it's like uh, i i love learning about other cultures and you know I, we can mix it all up and not just be gringo to mexican or host the, the world or kind of like uh, some of these other in a fun way, you know, a Russian character, a German one, you know. Mm-hmm. So, you can spin off in so many different directions. Yeah, you, know? you, you have I, that whole, uh, the whole mystical aspect going. And once you bring the mysticism, the culture, and the triad of light in, you can go anywhere with this. That's right. The trio of light right there and, and where that comes from. And that was hard. Uh, that was another thing I had to come up with because it wasn't shot for the trio of, of light, just so you know. Um, I had to come up with that for the, 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 the when I added the cartoon explanation mm-hmm. in, um, and because and, and like I said, I did not want to be the the hero, and I was looking too much like the hero, so I had to um, come up with this concept of them sparking their powers before me, and then I was the weak link, and then finally when I did turn mine on, we trapped him in the middle of our triangle, of the, the triad of light, and that's the only way we could beat him with teamwork. And I was the weak link on the team, so, yeah. Job well done with Green Ghost and the Masters of the Stone, Charlie. And I look forward to a big success with this, or at least enough of one, so that you can continue it and uh, give us maybe a sequel or an animated. Yeah, open. So I'm, I'm open. I, I, I hope you all, everyone that's listening enjoys it, and thank you for giving me the opportunity. Thank you, Charlie, and hopefully we'll speak again in the future. All righty then. Forward to it. Thanks, Charlie. Bye-bye. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye.